Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. I want to show you something really cool today. And it is based around a workshop that I recently put on around detecting and showcasing outliers. Now, some of the feedback that I got post the session, or actually during the session, was that the outlier, I guess, triggers, if you like, or the outlier, what we considered an outlier, how we considered an outlier was a static, I, I demoed it as a static number. And many were asking, well, could that number be dynamic? And, and just you know, just to go over what I mean here is that this number, 10,000, so an outlier I described in, in, in this demo is that the uh, if, if in any particular quarter, any quarterly selection, if sales was above 10K or above 30%, that was what we considered an outlier. Now, some th there's a lot of relevance to just having a, a, a number which is just set, right? You think about credit controls within banks or insurance companies, or think about a factory producing goods, um, you know, what, what they would deem a defective versus non-defective. Well, those sometimes are going to be static numbers, right? But there are occasions also where those numbers might not be static. They might You might want to make them dynamic. You might want to actually let a user select what the outlier number is in a dynamic way. Now, at the time I said this is so doable, it's so doable, all you have to do is capture a selection in a measure and then sub in that particular selection, or that, the measure you create over that selection, into the logic that was described during the workshop. And that's what I'm going to show you today, how you, can, how you could do this. Now, if you want to watch the entire workshop, I'll leave a link below in the description. It was it was a free one. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a member only session, an enterprise DNA member only session. So certainly um, check that out. It was about an hour long. Had hundreds of people there live, um, and you know there was so much to learn about. So many different aspects of, of of really drilling into this powerful outlier type analysis, anomaly type analysis. You know, some of that really valuable stuff that you can do inside of Power BI. But I want to, in this particular case, I want to make this dynamic. I don't want it to be a static 10K and a static 30% to derive what is an outlier or, or just to tell us which customers we deem outliers in any particular quarter. I want this to be totally dynamic. I want to be able, a user to be able to select within a slicer what they deem as the, the trigger points. And then be able to you know, do all the other great stuff that we do as well in, in, in this particular example. Uh, in this particular report. So I'm just going to jump over to a demo I've set up here. So as as you learn from the workshop is that we can actually drill into our non-outliers or an outliers because it is a, a dynamic calculation. Now what we need to do is we need to I'll just show you what feeds into here. The, this this uh, this measure here, the sales grouping measure is the key one. So I'm just going to find that sales grouping here. Well, we need to create another measure very similar to this. And the two key things that we're looking, we need to adjust are these outlier sales and these non-outlier sales. Now, I've set up a brand new formula, a uh, brand new uh, measure group here, which has these exact formulas in here, but I've named them dynamic. And we're going to sub in different amounts inside of here um, or, or different measures inside of here to make this work uh, in a dynamic way. So let's do it, let's do it. So the first thing we need to do, now th this is the key part of the formula. So in every single one of these formulas in the demo uh, is we have what, what we consider an outlier salesman and an outlier margin, and that's the 10K and the 30%. So look, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a water parameter and sub it into this area. And then this part of the formula is then going to be a dynamic number based on that selection, right? And then we, we will be able to see this move dynamically based on a slice of selection. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to jump in and uh, head to the formatting area. Uh, actually, sorry, it's a modeling area. And I'm going to go new parameter. So I'll just go new parameter here. And I'm going to call this one sales, sales amounts, sales outliers actually. And we're going to go, uh, in this case, we want to go up to 20,000, I think. Yeah, we'll go 20,000 and we want to go in an increment of 1,000. So we can actually adjust this you know, quite in quite a granular way. I'm just going to add a slice of the page and then you'll see that this slicer now, if we check this out, this is now a dynamic number, right? And if I go and look in my um, the new table that was created, I then have a measure as well. This measure, right, 
is evaluating is evaluating to whatever we select from in, uh, in within the slicer. So hopefully you can see where we're heading with this. So I'm going to create another one, and I'm going to call this margins margin outliers. And in this case, we want to go from zero to let's go let's go 45 percent. Go 45 percent, and the increment will be five percent. And we'll start off at uh, we'll start off at thirty. Uh, actually, sorry, we've got a good decimal number here as well. Okay, so simple as that. And then I'm going to go OK, and then that's my margin outliers is going to come to the right hand side here. I'm just going to fix up a bit of formatting before I do that. So I'm going to turn this one into a percentage. And we will turn this one. We'll turn this one into into some dollars as well. Great. Okay. So we now have two measures, right? And that's the key thing. We have the sale, the sales outlier value, and the margin outlier value. Now, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I am going to sub these in to the correct place inside of this format. Now, this is a game where variables come in really handy in my view they lay things out in a far more effective way than if you just blasted everything into into the one formula and so all i'm going to do is i'm going to go sales outlier value i'm just going to grab it from that um just going to grab it from that new table all of it was created automatically with a lot of parameters and then i'm going to do the same here for margins margin outlier values like so and then i know i can just copy both of these and i'm going to sub them into this other one here which is basically exactly the same and push enter and so now this number right is evaluating it is re-evaluating to these these um, result well these slicer values right so we haven't finished yet we haven't finished we've got one more thing to do we've got to go and grab this uh, this this formula pattern here and I'm just going to paste it in here I'm going to go I'm going to call this dynamic sales uh, dynamic outliers. We'll just call it dynamic outliers. And we've got to make sure that we sub in these new dynamic formulas instead. So I'm going to go dynamic outlier sales. And I'm going to go dynamic, dynamic non-outlier sales. Like so. And then I'm going to go OK. And then I'm going to select this particular uh, this particular visualization and you see here all I've got to do now is sub in instead of sales grouping I'm going to go and grab my dynamic outline like so and check that out check that out look how cool that was look how cool that was when we did that now if you think about it we now have this dynamic way that we can say what do we deem an outlier and what we don't deem an outlier I mean how amazing is that it's seriously seriously cool stuff right and you might, in a particular, you know, time frame, you might want to change the um, uh, change the the trigger points. You know, it might be over, you know, for summer period or winter period, it might be different. You know, you might have some downtime on your on your equipment. You know, there's just so many different ways you can use it. Now, hopefully, this answers the question for those you know who may have shown up to the um, uh, the workshop live or those who are going to watch the replay. You know, though you might be thinking, well, how can I dynamically input values? Uh, where these outliers are well I just hopefully showcased you to you enough how you would do it all you have to do is capture some value within a measure and then you can sub it into exactly the same logic that we applied to um, uh, during the workshop to uh, you know exactly the same logic based on um, you know, the demo was on historic numbers but now you can see how it can be done with dynamic numbers and then everything else can be can be filtered in exactly the same way. It's like, all you've got to do is just sub in those new values um, to make it to make those trigger points dynamic. Okay, you know I you know, can't tell you how much I love utilizing all of the techniques that we input uh, within this one example, and then making them dynamic is just sort of blow your mind type of stuff. So hopefully you can see that as well, and hopefully you can utilize you know some of these techniques inside of um, inside of your own uh, own models and your own analysis. Okay, hope you like this one. Certainly check out the whole workshop in the link below, uh, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of lots 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 more content, um, great content coming out about Power BI. Okay, speak to you soon.